Okay, this is part two to the Aboriginal um, silhouette that uh, we started last week. And what you're going to need for this project is a cup of clean water, um, a nice brush with a, a good tip to it. Um, I'm, I just pulled out these paint pens, but you don't need paint pens if you don't have them. And I chose some um, a temper paint. I chose white, yellow, uh, an orange, and blue. Um, and I'm also going to be using a watercolor to finish off the rest of my background. So that will be for the background. And what I'm gonna be using um, are these Q-tips for the designs um, on the border. So, um, if you don't have this kind of Q-tip at home, you could use um, a, um, a, a pencil with a nice eraser. Um, this one's not that great, but you can also use the tip um, on the eraser or a very small brush for some smaller designs um, to make the dots. So I've got a small brush here. And then I use a designated rag for um, my projects. And so just to reiterate about the silhouette, um, the silhouette is a French word and it's the image of a person, animal or object or scene represented as a solid shape of a single color, usually black within its edges and matching the outline of the subject. So I dug up a couple of um, things to show you. Actually, this is <laughs> me from quite a while ago and um, a silhouette. And then this is our dog, Jack. So as you can see, there's a, a variety of ways to create a silhouette um, for projects. So in this case, we did a kangaroo. So you'll notice some of the watercolor got onto my kangaroo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a black Sharpie and just go over some of the areas that my watercolor paint got onto. And I'm just gonna touch those areas up. And solidify my kangaroo. Okay, just go along the edges and that should be fine. So all I'm gonna do is the bottom part of my landscape with watercolor. So um, you can use like a brown because we already have black for the border. So you could use any variety of browns that you might have in the watercolor. And just go right up against the edge. Now, the reason I didn't do this last week was because I, um, my background was already wet from my sunset, so I didn't want it to bleed into my sunset. So I'm just doing it now and it won't take very long to dry considering um, we've used like a mixed media paper for that. And you could use kind of a variety if you wanted to of browns. I'm just going to do my lighter background, my hills in a lighter watercolor wash. And then I'm just going to make it slightly darker using more paint on my brush to darken the rest. And just use the tip to get into that hard to get place um, with your brush. And as you can see, since I've used more water on my brush for this top part, it's gotten much lighter, which is what I want. I wanna just show kind of a, a lighter perspective, atmospheric perspective for my background. <clears throat> 
And if there are any areas you need to touch up in your sunset, just make sure your brush is clean and that you're able to touch it up easily. There, okay. Now, um, we talked about designs last time I spoke with you and you can see on this example, um, some very simple Aboriginal designs. And here are some of the drawing symbols that you could use on your border, which might be fun to try. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this to the side and make sure your paint's available close to you. I'm gonna move this over here to kind of give you some ideas over here okay so for my border um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my q-tip now you can use a, any kind of q-tip and just dip the tip into the um, into your um, temper paint and you can just make some dots with the tip and you can use the other side if you have this type of q-tip at home you don't need to get one you could use um, like I said a pencil eraser to create some dots as well and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start to incorporate some of these dots and if I don't press very hard with my q-tip my dot is not that big but when i press with a little bit more um not pressure but I, i'm able to create some larger dots so i want a variety of large and small dots on my border now when you're doing a border you can Turn your paper um, around to uh, create the different shapes that you're going to be making that you can use from the symbols, the drawing symbols. And this is kind of just a, yeah, representing, it could be ants, fruits, flowers, rain, or eggs. The Aboriginal work um, consists of quite a few dots. It's really quite mesmerizing. Now, if you wanted to do something similar on the bottom to kind of have nice balance, you could do that on the bottom as well. Remember, if you don't press too hard, um, you get a much smaller dot. You can always go back over any of the areas that you started if it didn't show up bright enough. Now, if you don't have a paint pen, you can use a skinny brush with your temper paint. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of create with this paint pen, you can use chalk paint pens or chalk pens or regular paint pens if you have them available. And this is represents a ceremonial ground, digging hole, body paint, or water hole or rock hole. So you can kind of play with doing the same design opposite each other, and then something completely different on the sides of your border. You can kind of build up to that. Now I'm going to try using a smaller brush and I'm going to create 
with some more patterns on my border. And this is the symbol for women. And I'm gonna start something. Let's see. just kind of playing with this you might want to use a piece of paper and kind of draw out the designs that you want to create on your on your um, border Take your time, don't rush through your patterns. I'm just going to have too much water in that. Sometimes you have to add a little bit more to your brush. Now when you use a brush, you consistently get the same size dots. And as you can see with the Q-tip, you have a little bit more variety with the sizes. And the white seems to really stand out pretty nicely. You should see, be very careful. You can hold down your paper with one, with your fingers of one hand, and then just take your time and not be in a rush when you're creating your design. Do the same thing on the bottom. And you can alternate between the brush and the Q tip. Careful where you put your fingers so they don't get into the wet paint. Switch to another color. And you'll notice 
some paints stand out more than others. I'm not really sure why. It could be just the type of pigment that they're, they've used in the product. I really like this color. It's very bold. And you'll notice I'm not adding any water to my liquid tempera because it's already wet. Now, if you wanted to use any of the other designs that um, are in the symbols, that's fine. You can create your own border design. And then just go back in if any of the colors didn't take on your border, just go back over it. If you go too fast, you lose the, the circular shape of your dot. So you don't want to rush it. You want to have some nice shapes that really are um, clear. And I'm going to go back to my Q-tip and finish off some of these areas. I need the rest of this. you lose your shape, load your brush or your Q-tip back up with paint, and then go back over it. And you should get a nice round shape. I think I'll just finish the rest of this with my white dots. I'm just going to finish this side up. When you make your dots, it can be actually pretty mesmerizing and kind of transport you into another space.
Okay. And there you've got some interesting symbols. If you want to add some more in between some of the symbols on the top and bottom, you're welcome to do that to have a little bit of balance. And just be mindful of where your hand, your other hand is and not putting your hand or fingers onto any wet sections of your painting. Okay. And there, I think I'm done. Let me just do a little bit more down here and then we'll just wrap it up. So for our next project, um, or future project, I am going to have you get some soft chalk pastels. This is just a, a group of 12. Um, I got these at Staples. I think it was like $7.99 or $8.99. But you can get soft pastels at um, your local art store. I like to go to Blix. Or you can even get some at, um, at Target. I've seen them there. So um, for future projects, I'm going to have you get some soft chalk pastels and we're going to wrap this up for tonight and i just want to say thank you and i will see you next week